Hello, welcome to another Bright Path presentation. Today, we're going to talk about embracing resilience, harnessing the power of AI strength in your business continuity plan. My name is Haley Olvey, and I am here with my coworker, Jamie Anderson. I'm a senior analyst at Bright Path, and my experience is mainly in legal affairs, business continuity, and emergency management. I'm also currently a PhD student studying industrial and organizational psychology. Thanks, Haley. I'll introduce myself as well. I'm Jamie Anderson, a senior consultant at Bright Path, and I have nearly two decades of experience working in business continuity, disaster recovery, and crisis management. And I will be presenting on the AI topic with Haley today. The topics that we're going to cover is a level setting of what is AI, AI and business continuity, AI and crisis management, some examples, and then how we use it here at Bright Path. When we're talking about AI, we know it sounds a little bit of a scary topic, but this is just a general conversation of how we utilize it in our day-to-day -day tasks and more of how we bring it in in a realistic way to help our lives be a little easier in the business continuity space. So transforming organizations through AI sounds extravagant, but we use it in a lot of mundane tasks just to make our day go a little bit faster, some tedious things be a little bit easier. And we wanna harness that power so that businesses can enhance their resilience, minimize downtimes, ensure continuity of critical operations, and just use this evolving technology to help us in our roles and make improvements in resilience strategies. So to level set, like Haley said, on what is artificial intelligence, the definition of AI refers to the simulation of human intelligence in machines. And those machines are programmed to think like humans and mimic their actions. The term may also be applied to any machine that exhibits traits that are associated with the human mind, such as things like learning and problem solving. An example of how you can use AI is a the picture here of the little robot. Um, I used OpenArt, which is an open source AI image generator, and put in a prompt something like create cute AI robot, and it generated this image for me to display here in our presentation. There are a few types of artificial intelligence. The Type that we're probably most familiar with right now, the current state of artificial intelligence is called artificial narrow intelligence or machine learning. In this state, AI is really focused on performing specific tasks and it doesn't have the ability to expand its own functionality. Some examples of this are things like our smart assistants um, and our autonomous driving vehicles. Uh, AI is being used more and more in the medical field to help with medical diagnoses and to provide financial advice in the financial sector. The next type of artificial intelligence is a future state of artificial intelligence called artificial general intelligence, and that is machine intelligence. And in this state, AI is capable of performing broad tasks. It can reason and it can improve its own capabilities comparable to how humans can. Some examples of this are AI being able to earn a university degree, to do scientific research, and to come up with business strategies. And the final type of AI is AI artificial superintelligence. This is a possible state of machine consciousness, that theoretical form of AI where it has an intelligence greater than humans, and it has a self-aware consciousness, and it has the ability to solve problems and learn and plan for the future. A few examples of artificial intelligence that we have today, uh, the manufacturing robots that are used in many factories. I mentioned the self-driving cars and the smart assistants. Um, as far as the healthcare field, AI helps with proactive healthcare management and is used in disease mapping. I mentioned in the financial sector, the automated financial investing. Also AI is prevalent in the travel field as a virtual travel agent. Uh, many companies use AI for social media monitoring or for chat tools. 
Um, also conversational marketing bots. If you, for instance, are shopping and need to uh, ask a question or start a return, often you're having a conversation with a marketing bot. There's also natural language processing tools that can help to process uh, global languages. And then we're all familiar with spam filters in our email um, that artificial intelligence helps to filter out some of that spam that we're getting. There's many advantages of AI. And so to name a few of them here, some of the, the bigger uh, advantages, it's available 24 seven. It really is useful in helping with idea generation or doing deeper data analysis. We also use it for predictive analysis to increase our productivity, to optimize our processes, and to produce content, which um, we'll talk about in a little greater detail, but that's one of the main ways that we're using AI here at Right Path in content generation. AI also allows for risk mitigation, increasing efficiencies. Um, it's very uh, beneficial in helping you to make quick decisions to automate processes, reduce human error. It has an expansive data reach and there is enhanced security that comes along with AI. Some of the major disadvantages are called out on this slide. Uh, it can be potentially costly to implement AI, especially at an organizational level. The answers that you get can be repetitive um, where AI just keeps generating the same kind of content over and over again. Uh, there's moral and ethical dilemmas. AI can't have a moral or ethical conscience. Um, so that can come into play. There is the potential for security risks. Uh, you have a decreased human interaction and dependence when you're interacting with AI over uh, where you may have been interacting with a human in some instances. And then of course, there's the possibility of inaccurate data being provided to you. So you do need to fact check the information that you're receiving from artificial intelligence. Now that we've talked about a level set on what AI is, we're going to talk about AI and business continuity and how they can go together. When we're talking about business continuity, we know that there's many components that enter into the overall topic of BC. So we're going to start with the risk analysis. We can use AI to help with predictive analytics. So what this means is we can analyze large volumes of data, identify patterns, detect anomalies, or anticipate potential risks and disruptions. How we would do this is analyze historical data, market trends, and external factors. We can calculate the likelihood of impact of a disruption, and we can recommend mitigation and recovery strategies. We can talk about examples of these. So we asked, as a business continuity professional in the retail sector, what are the top 10 risks that I should consider that could result in a disruption to my business operations? We look at the list that ChatGPT provided. If we look at number five, natural disasters, we can ask AI, how often did a natural disaster occur in this region within the past 10 years? And it can give us a better view of what kind of disasters we're looking towards and when are those high heightened times that we should expect more probability of something happening. This helps one of us, not Jamie or I, having to go and Google when is the most heightened time for an earthquake or a tornado. I'm from Arizona. We have very limited natural disasters here. I've never experienced a tornado or an earthquake or something that is very normal for other parts of the region that maybe our client is dealing with. And I wanna be able to better understand that to help them with their business continuity plans. So AI can give me an insight that I just don't experience where I live, but I wanna know what is the probability, what time frame should I be looking at? And it can really just help me generate ideas that I can work off of as a baseline. We can look at some other ways that we use AI for risk analysis. It can perform gap analysis, prioritize risks, and produce conversation points. And it also helps us gather information. So like I was saying, 
we can gather information that I don't have to Google myself. We can prioritize our risks by saying, what are the main risks that this company could face? Like the list that we showed before from ChatGPT and perform a gap analysis. As I mentioned, I don't have a lot of experience personally with these natural disasters. So I can put into chat GPT and say, what am I missing? What should I be looking into that isn't listed here as a risk for this specific natural disaster? So it's really helpful for us here at Bright Path. Next is training and planning. This can assist with the creation of training materials. I can ask ChatGPT help me create some training materials on how HR should deal with a natural disaster. That will give me a foundation a lot quicker than I would be able to write one up myself. We can define unfamiliar phrases, concept, and terms. We can aid in plan generation when fed specific non-sensitive data. It can help break down complex recovery processes into actionable steps. And we can evaluate the effectiveness of different response strategies. So we use this in training and planning to provide easy to understand definitions, develop curated training materials, generate program emails and surveys, and simpl simplify plan contents. I know I use personally ChatGPT a lot for my emails. I can say, give me an example of an email about this subject, and it gives me some good language and baseline areas to start at before I'm typing out a longer email and messing with it myself. Okay, another area that we leverage AI is for exercises. And we work with a lot of our clients on uh, crisis exercises. And so some of the ways that we use AI is to help us identify relevant exercise scenarios, as Haley talked about with the training uh, piece of it too in the planning. Uh, similarly, with exercises, we can say, you know, what are some of the top exercise scenarios that we should be looking at for the healthcare sector? And that can just help us to generate some ideas as a starting point. We also use AI to help create exercise materials. So when you want to create an exercise, like a simulation exercise that seems really realistic and feels realistic to the participants, being able to create content like emails and letters and articles and even those pictures will help to really bring your exercise to life. And then finally, we leverage it to generate injects. So once we've def defined our scenario, and we have our materials, we want to continue the scenario escalating. Uh, AI is really helpful in helping us to generate those different in injects to keep moving our scenario forward. Here is an example of a prompt that we use in ChatGPT. The prompt was, as a business continuity professional in the retail sector, come up with some outage scenarios that I could use for a supply chain disruption. So here it came up with the top 10 um, ideas, including a transportation interruption or a supplier bankruptcy. Um, it just helps to have this list to first double check the list that you've come up with and uh, make, see if it's falling on this kind of top 10 recommendation list. And also fill in any gaps where maybe you didn't think about something like quality control issues uh, or energy shortage. And that's an area where you haven't done an exercise before. I know when we're doing regular exercises with clients, uh, sometimes quarterly or annually even, and just keeping those exercise examples fresh and relevant is really important to having a good exercise. So AI can definitely help with that. The next way we're using AI is during actual business disruptions. So AI can help to predict upcoming weather events and impacts. It can analyze social media and other feeds that are being fed to it to identify potential crises as they're arriving or before they're arriving. It can enable, enable a very quick response via monitoring and alerts. It can identify and dynamically allocate required resources where needed. So if you have let AI know that you have, um, you need 10 resources to complete a task, and then there is an impact to that location, 
AI can search through your data and help you to get the right resources where they're needed. It can also adjust strategies based on real-time data during evolving threats and serve as a critical decision support system. Um, in the midst of an event, there's a lot going on, a lot of data coming and going, uh, a lot of key decisions to make, such as where to allocate resources, and AI can really help to put all, pull all that information together and give you a place to start with some recommendations. Of course, you're always going to want to fact check and use your own personal experience and expertise to make the final decision, um, but AI can really help to ground you in those, uh, those different instances and give you a good starting place. how we're using AI for exercises and disruptions. Um, as I mentioned uh, with exercises, one specific way we've used it is to identify role specific exercise scenarios. So for instance, we will have different exercises that we do with different groups of team members. Sometimes it's at a business level and other times it's at a more executive level. And so those exercises will look different based on the roles and AI can really help us to come up with specific, specific scenarios that may be relevant to say a VP in marketing. And then next, it can help us create application outage scenarios. Um, so AI can look at how things are interconnected and identify, for instance, a single point of failure where multiple business units may be impacted, where we'd wanna focus on an exercise scenario. And then also for compiling information for after action reviews. So following exercises and or disruptions, we're always doing after action reviews and AI does a great job of weeding through a lot of information to pull out those key observations, the pain points and the action items that have uh, come out of those sessions. The next topic we'll be talking about is AI within crisis communications. A way you can utilize AI is to create holding statements, generate quick content that you would still have to edit, obviously, customize communications to impacted audiences, provide chatbot assist assistance, and leverage natural language processing, NLP, to translate global messages. We mentioned this because an example here is write a letter to Bright Path employees, letting them know that the office in Shoreview, Minnesota is closed until further notice and additional updates will be sent out later today. With this short paragraph of information that we provided, ChatGPT was able to come up with a quick email response. We understand that there's gonna need to be edits and alterations made to these responses, but if you're a business, especially like ours where we have a limited amount of team members that would be able to all work on these types of tasks, like creating emails all day long. This really helps us move things faster. I don't know about you, Jamie, but I send emails pretty often. It's a kind of a bulk piece of me communicating with our clients. And I think I found a lot of templates that I've created out of ChatGPT that I've made into templates to use for multiple clients just to save the time of sending out those mundane and repetitive emails. Yeah, I agree. That's definitely a great use for it. And too, um, we've explored like ChatGPT on our mobile phones. So, you know, if we're getting ready to leave home for a meeting or something, we can put in a prompt. And then by the time we're at the office, we have something ready to go um, for us to edit and send out. So that's another great way to use AI um, on the go or in the middle of a evolving situation. Agreed. Next, talking about compliance and reporting. AI can help you identify relevant industry policies and regulations, monitor and assess program compliance with those regulations, simplify complex data, automate reporting, and create visual aids. When I started in this area, it was kind of hard for me to understand ISO 22301 as a big overall chunk of information. So what I'm able to do is take a plan that I am looking to implement, obviously no sensitive data in there, 
but put that into chat GPT and say, does this align with ISO standard 22301? And it can help be a learning process for you. So we use this by breakdown regulations, evaluate continuity materials against ISO 22301, generate reports and metrics, and identify key points or summarize documentation. Okay, another way that we're using AI is just overall program optimization. So we've mentioned a couple of times generating content is a big use of AI for us, um, whether that's content for planning, training, exercises, or even content for awareness. Um, we do a lot of articles and social media posts and AI uh, is a great thought partner when we're doing that type of activity to help us come up with relevant content and to um, help us to expand upon the different points that we wanna provide. Also automating workflows and repetitive tasks. So those easy to do things that we have to do over and over again, um, that can be tedious and take a lot of time. AI in some instances is able to help automate those tasks. It can augment our human decision-making. Um, as we talked about, you know, when AI is fed some different information and it can come up with its idea of what the best course of action may be. And then you can take that as an input to your decision-making process. It also enhances the effectiveness of business continuity strategies. Haley mentioned um, looking at a standard or a regulation against the content that you have and looking for any gaps in that data. Uh, AI may be able to call out some enhancements that you could have to your strategies where there may be gaps. And then just to allow for continuous learning and improvement, we're always using AI to search for different uh, topics or to help us get different idea generation. Um, it really just is a partner that we use uh, as a part of our daily work. And a newer um, evolution in AI is its integration into some of the continuity tools that are available on the market. So these continuity tools uh, talk about AI and they uh, promote it as being able to create more comprehensive plans, automate your key processes, enhance your decision-making, perform that predictive analysis right within the tool, uh, test and refine your plan contents. Again, when AI is integrated into the tool itself and it is able to evaluate all of your data that you house there, uh, it can become really powerful in looking at testing and refining those plan contents, just promoting proactive risk management and dynamic continuity and of course, increasing your preparedness and your ability to respond to disruptions, which is the goal at the end of the day. Next, we'll start talking about the challenges in AI. With the good, there's always the bad. So it doesn't have all the answers. It's only as good as the prompts or data it's provided. We understand that you can't expect everything from it because it lacks critical thinking and lived experience. The experience that Jamie and I have had with our clients is not going to come through a chat GPT response. But if we provide it with enough prompting, we can get pretty close to the message that we are trying to send to the client if we're drafting something like an email. Professionals may be necessary to help implement your AI and it can require a higher level of expertise. Data needs to be clean and secure, and you may encounter compatibility issues with some legacy systems. They might not be readily available to insert AI into, but we're seeing a lot of trending, like Jamie mentioned, with business continuity programs that are updating to make sure that AI can be integrated within them. Next is the data it provides needs to be reviewed. As we mentioned, it takes some edits. There's the potential for inaccuracy or bias. It's constantly changing regulations. And you have to ensure that the tone of your message is brand appropriate. We have a tone at Bright Path that when we write our content, all of us at Bright Path try to write with that tone. There are times where something that AI may create just doesn't fit the way that we would 
do something for our client the way that we would consult. And it might not recommend something that we think is appropriate for the situation. So you want to make sure the tone is matching. The top five AI uses at BrightPath, Jamie's mentioned before, content creation. Produce meeting summaries, so key points, action items, decisions made. Simplify documentation, perform gap analysis, and we use it as a thought partner. For our meetings, there's a lot of times where I send back our clients a meeting recap just to make sure that we're clear on our action items, who's doing what, so nothing gets lost in, you know, after an hour long meeting, you might not remember what you promised somebody you were gonna do at the beginning of the meeting. And using that recap is a lot more efficient than me trying to write everything down or take notes. I'd rather be engaging with the client and actively participating in the conversation than worrying about writing everything down that I'm supposed to send in my recap email later. So it's definitely helpful there. All right, well, that is the end of our official presentation. Um, we did include our contact information here. If there's any questions, uh, we would be happy to follow up or chat with you um, regarding this topic. And thank you for listening today. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.